Hello everybody, I'm Jack and this is Raw Tropical Living. Thanks for joining me today. I hope your week is off to a good start. Um, I'm having a tough Monday. Um, it's, uh, I'm getting ready here pretty soon. I just wanted to get this video done before I take off. Uh, getting ready to go to work. Got to be at work at 1.30 today. Got to be on the beach to shoot some video and look at the water and the sand and the sun and probably a couple of bikinis out there. It's a tough job and I got a brutal five minute commute to get over there. It's going to be a tough one. So just getting myself ready for the challenging day ahead. <laughs> I was just wondering about this. I was uh, sitting around doing some reading last night um, and I was wondering if there's other people out there, you know, um, not necessarily people that are brand new to this lifestyle because you're changing and constantly adjusting when you're brand new because you're learning new stuff every day. But some of you people that have been doing um, high carb vegan lifestyle for maybe a couple, several years, have it under your belt, you're a little bit more comfortable with it, you've got things under control and you kind of control the ship now. It's not just like kind of jerking you around, you're eating just to hang on, you're trying to avoid this, but you've actually kind of got things, um, you know, you've, you know a good bit. You've uh, got your diet honed down to a pretty healthy state. But do you eat the same way all the time? Um, I just know for me, like, I am constantly changing. And not, that's not to say that I'm, I'm there, that I don't have any more to learn. That's, why I, I, that's, a, that's one of the reasons why I change, because I'm constantly learning little things. But the change for me is to plug in holes. It's because I do constantly learn new things, like a new thing like, oh, really, should I should be doing this. You need this to absorb this, and blah, blah, blah. But I also do it just based on how my body feels at the time. Um, I adjust my, um, I adjust my uh, diet sometimes when I'm traveling. I can adjust my diet to... I've gotten pretty good at it where, you know, like doing these little trips away and, you know, you have to go through the airports and you have to do this and that. I've gotten good at adjusting my diet to slow down my eliminations, adjusting my diet to speed up my elimination. Obviously on um, travel days, I don't want to be like a normal day at the house, you know, where I don't want to get caught somewhere where eh, it's just really not a great time to have to go to the bathroom or whatever. Sometimes, though, um, maybe I haven't paid attention to things. Maybe I haven't drank enough water for a couple of days. Maybe I missed the greens one day, or maybe something's just off a little bit, and the digestion slows down on its own, and I have to do little things to, um, to speed up the digestion. Well, that's just, what, that's just one example right there. I mean, I kind of do it. I, I, I like to think of this lifestyle, this diet, as fluid. And... Okay, let's let, the fat for instance. Okay, right now for the last say I, I lose track of days, nine or ten days, I've pretty much been I haven't been adding. Um, okay, well out of the last nine or ten days, two of the days I only the only overt fat I added was about a quarter cup of um, coconut coconut meat each day because I had a recipe. I had just found a recipe that called for that. I want to do that recipe as a video, but I'm not adding any. You know. I'm, not adding any fat right now. But anyhow, out of the last 10 days, two of those days I had that recipe with a quarter cup of coconut. That was it. And the other days, um, I haven't added any overt fats. Um, the reason I did that was, well, I just like to do that every once in a while. I really like to play with the fat. I'm not sure that um, we should ever settle on a level of fat or a level of other things and just always be locked and loaded and, you know, just straight across the line. <laughs> I've told you before. <coughs> I go a little higher on my fat. I never go super high, but I go a little higher. You know, I'll get into the 16, 17, 18 percent range sometime. Then I got to go down low. I feel I just feel that I feel something calling to me to go like you know for no overt or very low overt fat. Um, and then there's times where I just kind of like that steady uh, right around 10 percent. Um, I don't know. I just can't. I can't exactly tell you why I do that. That's one of the ones I don't have an answer to. But I just kind of. Instead of having a set fat level, like a certain, like a percentage that I stick to pretty much all the time, somehow my body just calls to me to go a little lower, a little higher at times. Now I don't know what was going on a couple of weeks ago. I don't feel like I was eating a ton more, but it might have been the fact that I was getting a lot more calories and I was having an avocado almost every day when I first got back from my trip, last trip to the States. But I just noticed something odd. I was standing, you know, I think I mentioned this in another video. I just started walking by the mirror. And I'm like, 
why don't you look a little thicker in the stomach there? And I just started noticing a couple of pairs of pants, and I'm like, wow, this is really weird. I don't get this. Um, so I don't know what I did. I never have quite identified why I felt like I was a little bloated there. And like I said, it wasn't like an inside, it wasn't like bloating, you know, like you have gas or something uncomfortable. It, almost, it just felt like I gained weight real quickly. Maybe it was some water weight, whatever, I don't know. I was eating, you know, I bumped up, I kind of went on a binge when I first got back here. So I am, it does kind of lead me to the belief that um, there is a limit to exactly how much we can eat, no matter how good it is for us. Because when I bumped it up about another thousand calories a day for a while, and I was having that fat, boom, got a little chunky. Well, anyway, what I did then was I'm like, okay, like, eh, I'm not really digging this. So I, well, I cut that down. I got rid of the ice cream at night. You know, took out that extra thousand calories, went back to, you know, hitting probably around or a little bit less. Actually, probably for the last four or five days, I've been a little bit less than the 3,000. I've probably been closer to 25, 2,700 calories, but I cut out the overt fat. Haven't been adding um, fat to the smoothies, you know, haven't been adding chia seeds, haven't been adding hemp seeds, and haven't been having avocado at night or any other kind of fat at night. Now, probably what I will add back in first, or I might just put a few days in there just because I, you know, get those good omega-3s in there, um, is I'll probably do a few days of just uh, the only overt fat maybe be in the chia seeds in my smoothies during the day. But why, so why? Why, why do I do this? I don't know. I don't know. Like I told you, I listen to, I think, um, I think that relationship with ourselves, that, that intuition that I keep talking about is very, very, very important. And that's the only reason I can tell you that I do change up my raw vegan diet um, a good bit. Or It's not drastic, it's just, a con it's just constant adjustments. I mean, I don't go from being, when I say change it, I don't go for, I'm not going from super low fat to high fat, or I'm not making, you know, I'm not making these big philosophical changes within the, the land of the raw vegan, but I'm just constantly adjusting, you know, upping the percentages of this, lowering the percentages of this, making up for things sometimes, you know, something like, that's why I use um, this um, daily green boost. Because some days I don't get all my greens in there. So some days there's that too. I feel like I'm kind of adjusting to make up for uh, maybe a few days that were deficient. Um, I don't know that we can, you know, that's not scientific. I'm not sure we can really catch up. But there will be a couple of that times where I don't, I haven't, you know, my, my good greens have run out. I get busy during the week. And... I have a couple of days where I'm like, wow, you haven't eaten, you just really haven't done it for the greens, you know, so then the next few days I'll, bam, pound those greens, hit the greens really hard. Um, and also, I think it's just, you know, like I say, I'm a seeker, I'm very much a seeker, you know, um, I don't have the same life that many of you do, I have a lot more time on my hands that I can experiment with some of this stuff. I understand that not everybody does have the time to do that, but, um, you know, I don't have a family to take care of, and um, I'm just taking care of my only investment. My only investment I have here, which is me, and and also too, it's just kind of a, it's besides wanting to be healthy, healthier all the time. It's kind of a hobby. I enjoy this stuff. I like seeing how I can manipulate, change what effects different foods have on the body, in, in various combinations, and in various percentages of uh, you know fat, of protein. Uh, I, I, I'm just constantly always trying to play, experiment, and see what makes me feel better. And I like, I like where I'm going. I feel, I mean, you know, if I didn't feel like the criterion for how am I doing, and I understand there's probably some things that I still have to pay attention to that I wouldn't necessarily feel right now, but a lot of it is just how do I feel? Where's my energy level? Do I feel good and strong? Where's my weight? How do I look at this weight? Like I say, when I talk about how you look at a weight or how people appear, it's not to do with the vanity. It's not about like, ooh, look at me. I'm a god. I'm like, I'm this, this, and that. No, it's about looking and just seeing like, okay, does the... Oh, how do I put it? I don't know. I just feel that the outer is going to reflect your inner health. Especially after you've been doing this for a while. Now, there's people, you know, like I say, that um, you're new to it. You might have weight to lose. You might be, you might be going totally in the direction. You can have. Some, I guess the point I'm getting at is, no, not everybody that doesn't look like they might, they might be where you think they are, 
is eating wrong, but they might be on in the right direction. They may be losing the weight. They may be getting to be fitter looking. So yeah, I like to use how am I looking, how am I feeling, and how is my elimination? You know, those are the main things right there. And I feel like I'm constantly, you know, I'm not doing everything perfect, but I do feel like I'm moving forward. I feel like, you know, working out, doing the yoga, being active. And I'm not very active, people. Let me tell you something. Sometimes I talk more about it, like these uh, progressive weight training workouts, um, doing core work. I don't put a lot, I, I try to maximize, you know, my time. I try to do the most efficient workouts possible. I don't, it's not like I'm out there. I'm not slaving away. I could be getting some more cardio. I could use some cardio, but it's not, listen, I'm not an exercise freak. Now, I might get back into being a lot more physical when this job's done here in less than two months now, but anyhow, that's why I'm always adjusting. I mean, I always just kind of want to be, and you know, there'll probably come that time where I've always like been like that type of person. I like to constantly say, you need to see that improvement. I need to see improvement or feel improvement, but just know that I'm moving forward. Now, at some point, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to probably peak out. And there's just, you know, because you can't, <laughs> you, you know, you can only keep getting better, 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 better. And then at some point, you know, unless I'm just become enlightened and I start levitating and I can run 60 miles an hour and lift the bus, you know, there's only so far I can go. But I would totally encourage other people like um, play with your food. Don't get locked in. And that's another reason to, you know, kind of get a little bit stronger on your path a little bit more stronger in your plan because when you're stronger and you're not dealing with just like, I feel like I have control. Um, you know, we don't always have control when we first come to this. So when you're not, when you don't have this thing under control yet, you're just holding on to the ride. You know, you don't really have the luxury of saying, well, I'm going to try doing this for a while. I'm going to eliminate this for a while because you still have those cravings and, and the food's kind of dictating it more than you're dictating to the food or how things are going to be. But I would totally encourage you to always keep your mind open, always be learning, and always be willing to try something. You know, don't, don't get locked into your doctrines. Don't get locked into your dogma. Um, just, just, you know, you might like somebody that's perfectly lovely out there um, that, that believes in this way or that or tells you this way or that. Maybe it just doesn't work for you and you have to have the open mind to listen to your body. Because I'll say, and then I'll finish with this, um, there's a lot of people out there that are hundreds times more smarter than me when it comes to all this stuff, but there's nobody out there, nobody out there that knows me, knows my body, feels, experiences my body like I do. So you've got to develop that intuition. You've got to listen that into it, that intuition, um, and you got to trust it. Anyhow, hope you guys like this video. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel and hope you're having a good work week. See you guys. Peace.